Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, my friend. I'm Bob Fowler, and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I am hopeful, prayerful, believing that this program is finding you blessed, well, prospered, healed, whole in every sense of the word, that already you've experienced God's faithfulness, God's blessing, God's provision in your life. Hey, if you woke up this morning, there's hope. If you have a song in your heart today, there's victory. If you have Jesus in your life today, at this moment, there is hope that whatever God has promised you will come to pass. Did you know that God is not a man that he would lie to you? And that all of the promises of God's word are yes and amen. Yes and so be it. Yes and let it be so. You know, you would be hard pressed to find a guarantee like you find from God. You would be hard pressed. The very best guarantee, the very best warranty, the very best money back guarantee, you would be very hard pressed to find a guarantee and a warranty like you find in God's word. And so today I want to just welcome you and encourage you to stay with me for the rest of the program. I believe that God has a word for you. You know, some of the saddest words in the scripture was where Jesus went to perform the miraculous. But the Bible says that he could do no mighty work there because as the result of a consequence of their unbelief. Did you know that the only thing that ties the hands of God, yes, I said it, ties the hands of God is our unbelief. So, the only thing left for you and I to do is to believe. You know, growing up, I remember my grandmother singing the song, Only Believe, Only Believe, All Things Are Possible, Only Believe. Now, you know those two words, only believe, it makes it seem so simple, doesn't it? But because we have this treasure in an earthen vessel, so often we are tempted and distracted to walk not by faith, but to walk by sight. What does that mean? Oh, I don't feel well today, or things don't appear to be right today, or I don't feel like I'm victorious, or I don't feel like I'm joy. We get into that soulish realm of your mind, your will, and your emotions, and we get off into the ditch. And God wants us to live in a place of faith, a place of trust. I quoted the scripture yesterday in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, to trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You know, so often, we, we, we fail to realize that God has done everything. He's done the heavy lifting. He's done the majority of the work. All that he asks us to do is to take the faith that he's put within us and to exercise it in his word. And so that's what we want to talk about today. Magnify the promise, not the problem. Now, let's be honest. You don't have to tell anybody, but have you ever magnified the problem and minimized the promise? I know that as believers, we know that we've received God's word. We know that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We know that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. We, we know all of that. But something strange happens from us knowing to us practicing and putting our faith in the promises of God's word as the absolute authority the absolute final say-so in our life, concerning our life, right now, no matter what you're facing. And so you are either faced with the challenge of maximizing the problem 
or maximizing the promise. And God's invitation to each of us is to maximize the promise. And I can't think of anybody better to look at than young David. David before he became king, David before he 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 did so many of the incredible things that God would use him as the king of Israel to do the victories over the battles that he encountered, but he was a man of faith. And I want to look at one verse in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. The Bible says, then David said to the Philistine, we could stop right there. What are you saying to what's standing in between you and victory? What are you speaking to your mountain? Are you speaking doubt and unbelief? Are you speaking what you feel in your soulish realm? Or are you speaking words of faith? You know, our speech will give us away. It's an indicator of what we're believing. God, I don't think I'm going to make it. God, this mountain looks too big for me to climb. I know that you said that it was mine. I know that you promised victory every step of the way, but God, you know, be careful when you begin to say, but God, (laughs) unless you say, but God, who is rich in mercy. (laughs) When we begin to, to say, Lord, I know that you said this. I know that you promised this, but Look at all the enemies. Look at all the obstacles. Look at the reasons why I should not obtain and receive and experience this promise in my life. My education, my upbringing, my surroundings, my my education. I mean, the list is endless. But we are faced with the opportunity to either maximize our problem or maximize the promise. And when I say promise, I mean the promises in God's word. And David here in in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, then David said to the Philistine, and I ask you again, what are you saying to your enemy? What are you saying to doubt and unbelief? What are you saying to fear? What are you saying to the areas of lack in your life, weakness in your life, insecurities in your life? What are you saying to those things that have shown up to oppose what God has promised you? Now, you know, we would think that if God promised us something, it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee from his perspective. But what's left to be done is for us to believe. And we go back to what I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the program. He could do no my Here the healer showed up. The opportunity of a lifetime showed up. Their deliverance had shown up. But one enemy, one threat, one difficulty that was able to defeat even the promise, the blessing, the healer sent from God was doubt and unbelief. You know, in all of our lives, we have the opportunity to make a choice. We can make a choice based on emotion or we can make a choice based on fact. Now, what do I mean by that? If we wait to make the right choice, dependent upon our emotion, how we feel, we are going to continue to kick the can down the road and to postpone what God is inviting us and calling us to do. And that's to make a choice of faith. Lord, I believe. You know, Friday night when Adis and I were doing the program, we were talking about worship and the weapon of worship. How that when you worship the Lord, and I had made mention of David, uh, Adis had read the scripture of how the children of Israel had hung up their harps on the willow trees. And that harp was used to be an instrument of worship. It was the harp that when Saul was tormented by a demon spirit, that David was called not only as a skilled musician, but as an anointed musician. And how that when David began to worship the Lord and strum that harp, and sing a song unto the Lord that those demonic spirits were exercised off of Saul and he found relief and peace. Well, worship 
is only good if we use it. You know, there are some people that they have a lot of money and they enjoy collecting things. Some people enjoy collecting automobiles. And when you stop and you look at the intended purpose of an automobile, it is to drive, it is to enjoy, it is to carry passengers and transport them from one place to another. Their intended worth and value was never to sit in a museum. It was to be used. Well, worship is the same, and God's promises are exactly the same. You know, there are some people that uh, I drive by cars once in a while, and I look in and I see on the dashboard some people have placed a Bible. And I've often wondered, I wonder if that Bible is ever opened and those promises ever realized. You know, some people carry their faith in between two leather back pages, the cover of a Bible. Well, the Bible was never meant to be concealed. It was meant to be revealed in and through your life. It was meant for you to discover the promise, to use the promise, to declare the promise, and to realize the promise in your life. So, in our lives, we have the choice right now. Now, there may be some things, as I said Friday night, there may be some things out of your control. There may be some things still being worked out. But there are a lot of things that are in your control that you can do right now. One of them is worship, but the second is to take the promise of God's word, to magnify the promise, and to minimize the promise or or the problem. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have Now, when you get this picture, here David is. He's a young teenage boy. Those that are behind him are doubting him, taunting him, ridiculing him, waiting for him to fail, waiting for him to die. There was no one behind him that was holding up his hands, encouraging him, praying that he would be a success. Now, maybe your situation has never been that dire, but maybe you have felt outnumbered. Maybe you have felt like that there was more against you than there were for you. Well, can I tell you that if you have a promise from God's word, and if you'll maximize that promise, and what do I mean by maximize? Talk more about the promise than you do the problem. Magnify the promise greater than you magnify the problem. Oh, the problem may be there, but you don't walk by sight, you walk by faith. You walk according to the promise that God has made to you. God has promised you a victorious life. Now, no matter what, you have to hold on to that promise. You have to promote that promise. You have to declare that promise above all else, even when it doesn't make sense. When you think of David going out against Goliath, as we mentioned, Goliath was over nine feet tall. He was four to five feet taller than David. Just in the natural, his enemy was bigger. Just in the natural, his enemy, his problem seemed to be greater. And the temptation would have been to do what the children of Israel did. They they didn't magnify their God above their problem. They magnified the problem above and beyond their God. Now, they had seen miracles. They had received miracles, but yet they chose in that moment to magnify Goliath greater than the God of the armies of Israel. And here David goes out with his experience of killing a lion, killing a bear. He goes out having his faith toughened and strengthened through being raised in a family of adversity. And he goes out there and he steps out on that limb of faith And he says, God, I'm going to put everything that I say that I believe on the line, and I'm going to magnify my God greater than my 
problem. Well, we know the rest of the story. The rest of the story is he slings that slingshot. He throws that slingshot. And with one stone, he strikes him in the forehead. And down goes Goliath. And with his own sword, Goliath's sword, he cuts his head off. We, as I've said before, have the privilege of knowing the rest of the story after the fact. But never forget, my friend, David was right where you are. And you are right where David was. All David had was his faith. All David had was his his confession and his declaration that the God that he trusted, the God that he served, the God that he depended upon, the God that he believed in was able, the God that delivered him from the hand of the lion and the paw of the bear was going to deliver him out of the hand of this uncircumcised Philistine. What are you declaring today? Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You may feel like today that all you have is your confession, that all you have, and I don't mean to minimize this, but that all that you have is a promise from God's word. If that's what you have, you are in the majority. Remember, the God that gave you the promise is the God who spoke the worlds into existence. Remember what God has done in your life. Remember how faithful he's been. Remember the miracles and the miraculous that he's performed in your life. Remember the answer to prayers that when it looked like all hope was gone and, and, and only God, except for God, providing it would not be provided for. But your faith in God's faithfulness was more than enough. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and verse 2, we read these words, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares or entraps us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. What are you looking to today? Again, you can go back to and listen to what you're speaking out of your mouth. Are you speaking words of hope, faith, dependence on God's promises? Are you magnifying the promises of God's word or are you magnifying the problem? The good news is, is if you've been magnifying the problem, you can change just like that. You can do a U-turn, a 180. You can repent, which means change directions and change what you've been saying. Therefore, if you change what you are saying, you will change what you are seeing. Let me say that again. If you change what you're saying, you will change what you are seeing. Are you tired of seeing the same old thing? then stop speaking the same old thing. Start speaking words of victory, faith, hope, promise, magnifying God's promises in your life and watch and see what will change concerning your landscape and your life. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you that you are a faithful God. I thank you that your word declares that faithful is he who calls you, who also will do it. I thank you, Lord, that you've already provided. You've already met every need. All you do is call us to believe you, to trust you, to declare your promises above and beyond our problems. I thank you that the Christian life is a victorious life, and I thank you that right now you're encouraging, blessing, strengthening, providing, meeting the need of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you know that God has a life of victory for you? It's not a barely get by. It's not, I'm just barely going to make it. No, he's called you to be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves you. Did you know out of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 that you're surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses? That if you could hear your loved ones right now, they'd be cheering you on, telling you not to give up, don't throw in the towel. Victory is just ahead. If they could make it, they would tell you, so can you. 
we are surrounded with a so great a cloud of witnesses. So therefore, we are going to continue to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. What God has started in your life, my friend, he's going to finish. He's not a God that brings you halfway. He's a God who takes you all the way home. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. I want to encourage you, go to our YouTube channel at Faith is a Victory Fellowship YouTube and subscribe. There you're going to find all of our programs that we've ministered. They will be a blessing to you. Also, share this program and others that have been a blessing to you with your friends, your family, and as I like to laughingly say, even with your enemies. Lastly, would you go into this, the description section immediately after the program and consider contributing and sowing a seed into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. Not only is the name of the ministry Faith is the Victory Fellowship, but we are a faith ministry. We trust God. We believe God. We confess his word to be true above and beyond all else. We pray God's richest blessings to rest upon you and upon your family as you prayerfully consider sowing into the ministry. Thank you again. I look forward to being back with you tomorrow right here at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. But until then, always remember, I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, never, ever forget, he is faithful.